Hey guys, it's Tom. Welcome to the Pernstar channel and the premiere episode of Nerd Alert. We're going to cover what Ackerman steering actually is. We're going to go from the ground up all the way back to basics to show you what that term actually means and what the big differences are between grip driving and drifting. We're also going to touch on tow and we're going to talk about dynamic tow. We're going to cover all these topics without assuming that you have any background uh, on well, any of the automotive terminology. So I'm not just going to bombard you with buzzwords. We're going to really do this from scratch. I am a firm believer that if you can't explain a complex topic in the most simple terms to someone that has no background in it in a way that they actually understand it, then that is proof positive that you don't understand it yourself. And so today we're going to start this video with one of the most powerful teaching tools in history. Smelly markers. Mm. What we will also need is a representation of a car, which I crafted before this, specifically a piece of cardboard. So I'm going to make use of what deceptively looks like a wrench, but it's actually a circle doodler. That's the scientific term. Wonderful. We need to make use of the cardboard to take these arcs that we just created as a representation of a corner. And using the cardboard, we're going to see what a car actually does when it is maneuvering around this corner. What you can see here is that this board has six little holes representing the theoretical pivot points of the front wheels and the rear wheels in the center of the axles. Overly simplified. For scenario A, we're going to be looking at grip driving. Here is a very simplistic representation of a car. This car is still needing wheels. Now we're going to look at what the front wheels actually do when this car is going through a grip driven little turn. So in this image, you've got Karen and her Prius cruising into the drive through at her favorite Starbucks to pick up her $10 Frottuccino. And as she does so, she's cruising. She's not breaking traction or anything. She's just like putzing around this turn. When you look at it, a corner at the end of the day is an arc. An arc has a center point. This theoretical alignment that her car should have to turn this perfectly without any scrubbing or rubbing or slipping of the front wheels requires both the wheels to be normal to the center of the turn. So this way, if the car turns this corner, it's not going to do anything funky with its tires. On the other side of the spectrum, we're going to do another cardboard doodle. Okay guys, so I successfully completed the second doodle car. This time we have Jamal clutch kicking his rusted out 240 into his dispensary. And unlike the grip driven car, this car is now sideways. And you can see that the rear axle is pivoted out around the front axle. This would be the center of his car if he were grip driving, but he's drifting. So there is an angle right there and we'll just call that alpha Y for yeet angle, because why not? Now, I did the same thing on the drift example as I did on the grip example. I drew lines from the center point of the turn to the pivot point of the wheel. And then I drew the wheels normal to that line. And normal just means at a 90 degree angle. It is following the tangent of that arc. Then that is the position that will give you the least rolling resistance, the most grip potential in theory. We looked at how does the front suspension need to point its wheels. We haven't used a single automotive term yet, right? I mean, this is the video about Ackerman and this is the video about tow and we haven't touched any on that, right? So I can understand why you may be getting a little bit impatient, but give me a freaking minute. We'll get to that. Don't worry. It's all good. I just wanted to really start from scratch. I went ahead and drew another one of my stick figure cars. Now, we are going to have a quick conversation about what tow is. But you can see that all the wheels are just pointed straight. If you were to 
draw a line to make a projection of where those two front wheels, the steering wheels, are pointing, you would just get two parallel lines, meaning they will never intersect with each other. That is called zero toe. If your wheels actually are at an angle, like so, and like so, if you're going to draw those lines out, they're going to meet in front of the car. That's an easy way to remember that that actually is toe in. So on your alignment sheet, toe in will show up as a positive number. The opposite can also very much be true. I went ahead and finished this doodle and also added wheels that are turned towards the outside so that if you extend their projections, they will meet behind the axle. They meet out back, it is toe out, or a negative angle on your alignment sheet. When you clicked on this video, you expected to hear the term Ackerman a lot probably, but we're not quite there yet, bear with me. So now we touched on what toe is, toe in, toe out, zero toe. This is static toe. This is what a technician on an alignment rack would adjust on your car when it's sitting there, the wheels pointed forward and the steering wheel straight. Here we are back at our drift versus grip example. Now that we've covered what toe is, we should probably check out what the toe in this situation looks like, right? Looking at the grip car, what you can see, if I were to extend the trajectories of the front wheels towards the front of the car, they would never meet because they're going further apart from each other. So that means these lines will eventually intersect somewhere over here. Now what does that mean in respect to the front axle? These two are going to meet out back. So this car currently has toe out in this scenario. Now interestingly, this is where this video I think will get cool because Look at what happened to the drift car. If we extend the trajectories of the wheels to see where those will meet, we can't extend them out to the back. They're just gonna keep going further and further away from each other. These are actually now extending out to the front and they're probably gonna meet like somewhere up here. These are going to meet in front of the car. So that means it's toe in, Ackerman time. What is Ackerman steering now? The dude Ackerman, who actually just filed the patent because it was some other dude that actually came up with this back in the 18th century. Um, meaning this was already invented before there were cars. This was for horse-drawn buggies and stuff. But anytime you have four wheels and two of them are steering wheels, you will run into this problem because this isn't a car issue, an issue with a specific kit or brand or whatever. This is a geometry issue. If you want to turn a corner in grip fashion, you need to steer the steering wheels at different angles of each other. Because remember, if this car at this position in the corner had zero toe, those wheels would be parallel, but they aren't. Ackerman steering refers to a steering system that is set up so that as you turn the steering wheels, they don't behave parallel to each other one wheel gains more steering angle than the other. That's what Ackerman steering means. When you have a scenario like what we see in this grip car, that is called positive Ackerman. When you have a scenario like this up here, this is called negative Ackerman or reverse Ackerman. Every production car that you can buy, 240 Nissan, 350Z, uh, Mustang, 8.6, doesn't matter, any car that is being built by an OEM will have positive Ackerman because if they didn't, they would be really sucky at turning grip turns. And after all, that's what they're made for. Without throwing any name brands around, throwing any modifications around for your car, my objective with this video was for you to yourself basically arrive at the conclusion why there is a difference between geometrically correct drift car alignment and grip car alignment. That's what this is all about. And now we're going to do something really cool. 
I've prepped some animations in CAD because I love Sharpies and markers and crayons and all that, but animations are a lot easier to do on a computer. This first animation is going to show you the impact of drift angle, yaw angle, or how we called it, yeet angle, on the suspension geometry of the front of the car. So you see that the car starts out in grip orientation and then I progressively rotate it. Now look at the front wheels and look at how much more toe in they are getting the more you send it, basically. There's a second animation. In this animation, you will see the effect of the corner radius on your front alignment. What you can see is one of my stick figure cars and it's locked in at a set drift angle. And now I'm varying the size of the corner radius. Look what that does to the front suspension. The smaller that radius gets, the crazier looking uh, the front geometry gets. Your corner radius and your drift angle will change the amount of toe that you will need to be geometrically correctly aligned. In real life terms, what this means is that you can't have a universally correct uh, alignment on your drift car. It's impossible. What you can have though is you can say, okay, I'm driving Urbandale or I'm driving a go-kart track US Air in Wisconsin. Those corner radii are going to be night and day. So you can, depending on what your goals are, optimize your car for little tracks, optimize your car for big tracks. If you have a kit with fully adjustable Ackerman, typically those use Ackerman plates. So if you know what you want your car to be dialed to, you can literally make different Ackerman plates for different tracks. Does that mean that every drift car is set up for reverse Ackerman? All of mine are. I did the math, I looked at the geometry, I decided that negative Ackerman is the way that I would like to set up my cars. And once I did, I loved how they felt. I can't see me ever going back to positive Ackerman geometry anymore because my toys are dedicated track toys. I don't have a street driven drift car. Cars that are set up for reverse Ackerman are simply rare. And so a lot of people haven't experienced them. And if you're used to driving with positive Ackerman angle and you're really good at it, you know, you may not feel the need to change anything and that's fine. But I just wanted to give you the purely geometric background. If you build a dedicated drift car, this is something that you should definitely look into. If you have a street car that you also enjoy taking to the track, then it's probably not in your best interest to even pursue reverse Ackerman because it is going to be horrendous on the street. It is just something additional to be mindful of when you're actually building your car. Say you want to give this a try, you want to feel for yourself the differences between positive Ackerman geometry in drift, negative Ackerman geometry in drift, just make sure that the parts that you're about to put on your car actually support that whole range. A stock car is going to have positive Ackerman. If you take the first steps towards increasing the car steering angle and go towards like modified knuckles, for example. They will have holes re-drilled or the knuckles cut and welded or something. They are typically non-adjustable. There's just one hole you put the tie rod in and that's that. And the geometry can't be changed enough in most cases to actually get to a reverse Ackerman angle. I really hope that you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We haven't looked at the components on the car yet though that are responsible for generating the Ackerman steering effect and the toe gains, both positive as well as negative. So I feel like if this video is well received, that would be a logical next step for a part two. If you have other ideas for what I should do on these nerd alert segments, then please let me know because believe you me, when it comes to physics, suspension geometry, math, Excel sheets, I can just talk for hours and hours and hours. If that's the content you're looking to find on YouTube, then please let me know because I'd be happy to put out more of it. Cheers.